हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल सिविल स्टेप्स सो सिविल स्टेप्स हैज स्टार्टेड वन ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट सीरीज दैट इज फॉर प्रीलिम्स 2022 सो टारगेट प्रीलिम्स 2022 इनिशिएटिव ऑफ सिविल स्टेप्स विल हेल्प स्टूडेंट्स टू कवर द इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक्स ऑफ हिस्ट्री जोग्राफी पॉलिटी इकोनमी साइंस environment and current affairs so this target prelims 2022 series has started from 19th of december 2021 and will help you to cover more than 1000 important topics for prelims examinations target prelims 2022 has been designed keeping in mind the dynamic nature of the upsc civil services examinations hence target 2022 focus on overall preparation of a serious civil services aspirant and it will sail you through upsc civil services examination very smoothly so today we will discuss important mcqs based on economy so the first question is if you withdraw rupees 1 lakh in cash from your demand deposit account at your bank the immediate effect on aggregate money supply in the economy will be option a to reduce it by 1 lakh second to increase it by 1 lakh options option c to increase it by more than 1 lakh option d to leave it unchanged so you can pause this video and write your answer in the comment section below i hope you have written the answer so the answer of this question is option d to leave it unchanged so aggregate money supply means m3 which is equal to coin and currency with public plus demand deposit with commercial banks plus time deposits with commercial banks so if you withdraw 1 lakh rupees from your account then m3 will remain unchanged because 1 lakh will shift from the column of demand deposits to the coin currency with public so you should know about a broad money broad money and narrow money so what are the difference between broad and narrow money what are the components of m0 m1 m2 m3 and m4 so this was the question that was based on m3 broad money concept so you should know about broad money so now let us discuss question number second which one of the following is likely to be the most inflationary in its effect option a repayment of public debt option b borrowing from the public to finance a budget deficit option c borrowing from banks to finance a budget deficit option d creating new money to finance a budget deficit so you can pause this video and write your answer in the comment section i hope you have written the answer so the answer of this question is option d creating new money to finance a budget deficit so extremely high rates of inflation are generally associated with high rates of money growth it is often the result of financing large deficits by printing money so this question was uh, asked by upsc in 2013 prelims examination and this the same question was repeated by upsc in 2021 prelims examination if you are not aware of it then you can clearly check it from upsc official website also so this you can clearly see the importance of previous years questions so you should read about other options also which are not the part of this answer so now let us discuss question number 3 which of the following would include foreign direct investment in india first subsidiaries of foreign companies in india second majority foreign equity holding in indian companies third companies exclusively financed by foreign companies fourth portfolio investment so select the correct answer using the codes given below option a 1 2 3 and 4 option b 2 and 4 only option c 1 and 3 only option d 1 2 and 3 only so 
you can pause the video you can write the answer in the comment section so the answer of this question is option d 1 2 and 3 only so a foreign direct investment involves establishing a direct business interest in a foreign country such as buying or establishing a manufacturing business while foreign portfolio investment refers to investing in financial assets such as stocks or bonds in a foreign country hence fdi does not involve portfolio investment so these topics like fdi fdi and fii which is or fpi is extremely important for from upsc prelims exam point of view so you should know every little detail about fdi so you should also follow the current affairs about fdi and the terms associated with this so you should know the components of fdi what are the components of fii or fpi and what is included in fdi or fii and what are the difference between fdi and fii so why fdi should be promoted in country so what would be the consequence if fdi would be more in any one particular country so you should know all about this stuff so now let us discuss question number four the lowering of bank rate by the reserve bank of india leads to what option a more liquidity in the market option b less liquidity in the market option c no change in the liquidity in the market option d mobilization of more deposits by commercial banks so you can pause this video and write your answer in the comment section i hope you have written the answer so the answer of this question is option a more liquidity in the market so bank rate refers to the official interest rate at which rbi will provide loans to the banking system which includes commercial or cooperative banks development banks etc when rbi lowers the bank rate the cost of borrowing for banks decreases and the credit volume gets increased leading to increase in money and more liquidity in the market so bank rate is the quantitative tool of monetary policy so you should know the monetary policy also what are the quantitative tools of monetary policy what are the qualitative tools what are the tools in quantitative and also in qualitative also so you should know about uh, what is bank rate what is repo rate reverse repo rate uh, market stabilization schemes and in qualitative tools also you you can learn about rationing of credits loan to uh, uh, one there is one requ requirement ratio so you should know about that you should also know about monetary policy committee so all these concepts are interrelated so you can read all about that from standard sources and basic NCERTs. so this was all about question number four now let us discuss the final question of this video so the question is a country is said to be in a debt trap if option a it has to borrow to make interest payments on outstanding loans option b it has to abide by the condition conditionalities imposed by the international monetary fund option c it has been refunded loans or aid by creditors abroad option d the world bank bank charges a very high rate of interest on outstanding as well as new loans so you can pause this video and write your answer in the comment section so the answer of this question is option a it has to borrow to make interest payments on outstanding loans so debt trap debt trap is a situation where you add on a new debit in order to repay an existing debt so this was all about today's video so you can also read about all other three options which are not the part of this question which are not the part of this answer so you can read about that also so this was all about today's video uh, so you can subscribe the channel and you can also press the bell icon thank you very much